Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Valley Vegas Church. My name is Pastor Russell Hoyt. I'm one of the campus pastors. This is Pastor Jerry Johnson, our other campus pastor. And this is Derek Demarest, our director of operations and deacon over our Set Free ministry. And uh, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight. We know tomorrow is a going to be a day of thanksgiving, but you know, as Christians, we should always be thankful for the things in our lives. Um, you know, David wrote in Psalms 100, verse four, he says, enter in his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I think any time that we gather, anytime we come into worship together, there needs to be an attitude of gratitude just to come into God's presence. And I know that we all have something to be grateful for. Um, you know, the Old Testament, the psalmist believed that this psalm was actually a psalm of thanksgiving to God for the things that were done in people's lives during the hardest part of their life. And, you know, as God is so faithful in all that he does, uh, I can think about the first Thanksgiving in 1621. I was researching this. That Do you know that there was 102 pilgrims that were coming here to America and half of them did not make it. 53 of them made it. And it was because of some local tribal Indians that actually helped them with the food that year that they made it through that winter. And that was actually the first Thanksgiving that happened. Now, you know, we make it through these hard times because God is always our provision. And I know that since 2019, I can speak for myself and probably for all of us, I think right before COVID, it's been the hardest five years of my entire life. And it's also shown me what to be grateful for in my life. Um, I think sometimes we take a lot of things for granted. We take people for granted. I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for coming out of 2020 is that our time on earth is not definite for anybody. Um, every day that we have is a gift. And we need to be thankful for the time that we can have with each other and with the people that are in our lives. Um, when you're thankful for the things that you do have, this is something God showed me, you'll actually be able to enjoy those things in your life. Because if you don't see the things that you have, then you don't know how to be thankful for those things. So to have an attitude of gratitude, that means that we have to understand that God is sovereign. And I want to read out of Ecclesiastes uh, 7, verse 13. Uh, it says, Consider what God has done. Who can straighten what has been made crooked? When times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider or think this. God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, no one can discover anything about their future. I think there's two things that we can take away from that is one, obviously, in the good times, we need to be grateful. We need to be thanking God. But also, when times are tough, we need to be thoughtful. And we need to be thoughtful in the sense that God's faithfulness is going to get us through whatever we're going through. So I'm going to ask you, Pastor Jerry, what are you thankful for that is good in your life right now? And what are you thankful for for the things that were hard that you can see that God did something good? Yeah, you know, when, when you're talking about that, I w I'm thinking about just personally this year in particular, um, it's been a rough, like you said, even since uh, before COVID yeah. or during the COVID time, it's been a rough season for us. But what I'm grateful and thankful about is that the very first thing that comes to my mind is that God sent his son. Amen. You know, when God sent his son for everything that I could ever do right or wrong, God sent his son on the cross for all of my sins. And that's that is something that I will always be, as long as I have air in my Amen. lungs, be grateful and thankful for. Absolutely. And then the, the other stuff kind of comes down just to the, the material and life things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm grateful and thankful for my house and my kids and my family. Um, but I have an opportunity to share the word of God. And I have an opportunity to impact people and bring them closer to God. And I think that's the part I'm thankful for. I didn't expect the position. I didn't. Right. Um, I wasn't looking for something like that. But now that God is 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 pruning me and growing me and stretching me, um, it gives me an opportunity to see the plans that He's always had for me. And I'm so grateful and thankful for that. So, Amen. yeah, that's what that's. What, what is something heart. that you look back on and you, it was a really hard time in your life, but 
you see the faithfulness of God and, and, and seeing the faithfulness of God, it just gives you that gratefulness. Yeah, and it, and it probably like a, a lot of us have talked in the past is uh, my relationship with my wife. That was probably the toughest time because I didn't see at the time that we were gonna make it. In the first year of our marriage, um, it was a rough, rough patch. It was a difficult time, even when I was questioning, like, was this really from God? Um, so when I look back at that time and what we went through and, and our experience with growing together, yeah. um, had, I couldn't see the future. <laughs> I couldn't see what was gonna happen where I'm sitting at in 2024. But at that time, I, I saw no path. I saw that well, this is probably gonna be another failure in my life and an experience that, that um, I didn't see coming. And I thought it was a blessing, but when I looked back at it, it was absolutely a blessing. Yeah. It was absolutely the plan that God had for me, but he didn't make it, the road wasn't the easy path, where sometimes right. we think, oh, God's blessed us and now we're on the path and it's just gonna be smooth sailing. Right. And it wasn't like that. So I was getting a little bit ahead of myself expecting that it was gonna be smooth sailing, we're yeah. gonna be doing this, it was gonna be, and it was anything but that. But during that season, during that movement, um, as we grew closer together and closer to God, that's exactly what he did. He had us grow closer to him. Right. Then the path that we're on puts us in the situation that we're at now where I'm extremely grateful. I know I married my best friend. I love my wife and, yeah. and I would have it no other way. Yeah. Even the experience, I want, I'm, I'm glad I went through that experience to get me to where I am right now. Even being a man of God and knowing the word of God, I mean, the troubles come in our life. Yeah, it does. And it's it's how we we deal with the things that come in our life that not only shows us who we are as men of God or right. people of God, but also God's faithfulness in our circumstance. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I wanted to share this with the congregation because this spoke to my heart. Um, and I wrote this down. It says, remember, this is what I want you guys to remember. Remember, being grateful is about appreciating what one has as opposed to what one wants, mm -hmm. right? So I want you guys to remember that. But being thankful implies that, that you are acknowledging something that someone's given you. Thankfulness is mentioned 71 times in the New Testament, right? 71 times. And, uh, and I want you to know, and this is the story that spoke out to me. So Luke 17, and this is how gratitude draws us closer to God. But Luke 17, verse, uh, chapter 17, verse 17 through 19, it says, Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Stand up and go, your faith has made you well. And I, what I wrote down here, what I wanted to, you guys to know in this season right now, tomorrow being Thanksgiving, is that you know each one of those that he healed, the lepers that he healed, they were grateful, they were happy. Limbs were getting restored, sores were being removed, things were going come out, they were extremely happy, but only one came back. Mm. And actually that person that came back, they dropped to their knees, they fell on their face, and they thanked God. It was only one. So we're, we're, what I want you guys to know is that we're all, they were all grateful, right? But gratitude brought the one back. So when you, have, when you have the gratitude and you come back and thank God, and that's where my, I want to wrap up my end of the story is that everything, I was thankful for all these things, but the, the gratitude is where I, it brought me back to God and being thankful for everything that you put me through, not just the good times, right? not just the valleys, but the mountains, everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that you brought me to and that made me the man that I am today. Well, and you know, something you said is that that leopard came and he fell at Jesus's feet. That's a sign of worship. Yes. So yes. gratitude and thanksgiving is actually worshiping, worshiping. God yes. and thanking him for who he is. Amen. 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 How about you, my brother, Derek? What, what are some things that you're th thankful for that God is doing right now that's good? And what are some things that you're thankful for that as you went through the hard times in your life, you saw the good God was doing? Well, I'm, I'm really thankful for, just like what Pastor Jerry said, of who Jesus is. <clears throat> the, what he's done for me and for all of us is just, it's unimaginable, it's unexplainable, but I'm forever grateful to him. Um, I'm thankful for my wife and my children 
um, that it was years ago I never thought that I'd even have a family and let alone uh, the pain and trials that we've gone through to be in a stronger place today than we were ever before. And that's all from the grace and mercy of God. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've been talking, Russell, in these last couple of weeks for, for me have been um, uh, rather difficult and uh, to the point of where uh, I couldn't see past um, my problems. And what I'm thankful for is having a church family, of having um, a place that uh, we could come to and, and be honest about where we're at. Right. And uh, it's through confessing that, it's through uh, facing those, you know, even today, for starting my day off saying that I can't even breathe, and so what do we do? We go into prayer. Right. You know, I'm, I'm thankful to have access to God, and how we have access to Him is, is through prayer, yeah. through worship, through praise. Yes. Um, and so... The being thankful through the bad times, the irony is, is for myself, I don't realize um, the bad times until I'm sitting in the good times, and I don't realize the good times until I'm sitting in the bad times. Right. And so that, that creates the cycle. Yeah. Um, but through the trying times, uh, there's uh, Psalms 136, I'd like to read that, um, has just been uh, piercing my heart and just filling it with, with God. And so that reads, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for his steadfast love endures forever. And brought Israel out of among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his steadfast love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now remember, this is our Father. This is, this is God. This is Papa. And through the trying times, when we want to be thankful, remember who he is and that we're a part of his plan. He's not a part of our plan. And so um, today I'm just thankful to be able to sit here. Um, and be reminded of who I am in his eyes. Amen. Amen. And, and something you said in there is every circumstance, his love endures forever. Yes. Amen. And that's his sovereignty is his love and, and his faithfulness to his people. Yes. Um, I know that in order for us to be grateful, um, we have to think, like I said, about the things that we have to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Um, before we can have an attitude of gratitude. And that's what I call it. It's an attitude of gratitude. It's not just being thankful. It's an attitude that we carry. It's an attitude that um, we only get from being in the Word of God and the Word of God being in us. I know in some of the most hardest times in my life, the things that God was doing made absolutely no sense to me at the time He was doing it. But one of the scriptures I would hold on to uh, in those times is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's my favorite scripture it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding but acknowledge or think about him the lord in all your ways and he will direct your path mm -hmm. and so a lot of times it's how we think is what's going to direct us in the in the direction that we're going and if we're thinking about god and we're focusing on his goodness and his love that endures forever it's going to get us into that path that even when there's the valleys of good times, we get to rejoice in that. But in the valleys that are bad, we're going to see what God is going to accomplish through those valleys. And, and I truly believe that God is the God of his word. Mm -hmm. And it says in Isaiah 55, 11, it says, So my word goes out from my mouth and it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. I believe God is a God of his word. And so when, when I read that scripture, Pastor Jerry and Derek, I believe that when I declare something that God has given me in a promise in his word, that he's faithful to make it complete in my life. 
And, you know, um, there's scriptures that, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but I just want to share the things I'm grateful for right now is uh, I just got to marry my daughter on the 16th. Oh, yeah. uh, one down, three to go. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, amen. Um, you know, and, and she married a, a, a good guy and uh, I gained a son. So I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm also thankful that I just celebrated uh, 34 years of being married yes. to my bride. Yeah, yes. and she put up with me all this time. God bless her. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm so thankful for so many things. I, I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for you guys. Um, I'm thankful that I'm one of your pastors. I really am. Like Pastor Jerry said, I never asked to be a pastor. I just loved people. And so did Jerry and Derek. And, you know, God, God sees who he wants to watch over his sheep. And so, you know, we're honored to be your pastors. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, there's just so many good things that I could talk about. But I want to talk about some things that were hard yes. where God, yes. in hindsight, showed me his, his faithfulness. And that was in 2019. Like I said, my mom was uh, diagnosed with cancer. And um, because of, of the generosity of the staff here, I mean, you guys carried a lot of my weight while I couldn't be here. And I was by my mom's side for 30 days. It was exactly 30 days. And and I remember as we were going through that valley, it, it was hard, you guys. It was a valley that, that made me really, as a pastor, say, God, why? Mm -hmm. why? Why like this? Why does, why does my mom have to pass away this way? Mm -hmm. And in his word, he gave me, it was so weird because I was in this season of like, God, where are you? Mm -hmm. And I opened up the word and it was Psalms 22, verse 1. It says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I'm like, God, that's how I feel right now. Right. I feel like yeah. you, you're not here, even right. though I know you are. I just can't feel you. And I heard the Lord tell me, you're on the wrong chapter. Turn it to the next chapter. And then verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it goes on, and the scripture that he gave me was Psalms 23, 4 for my mom, and I would share this with her. Is, Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll fear no evil, for I am with you. My rod and my staff are there to comfort you. And what the Lord showed me in that, that season is you've known me as your healer, your father, your savior. Now you're going to know me as a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. thankful that he's a shepherd. He's not just my father, my God, and my savior. He's my shepherd. Mm -hmm. With my daughter, um, Ashley, who struggled with addiction for almost 10 years, uh, that was a battle. And, and just to let you know, church, even pastors have kids that they're good, but they make bad decisions. And uh, it affected our whole family. It did. It, it, it really tried my faith. Um, there again, God, where are you? Like, why? You know, I, I, I've raised them in the ways of the Lord. What happened? What did I do wrong? Right. And the Lord, in me crying out to him, he said, Zechariah 4, 6. And I didn't even know what that scripture was. And I opened it up and it said, for it is not by your might or your power, but it is by my strength, says the Lord God Almighty. Amen. It's by my spirit, declares the Lord. Amen. And every time the devil would attack me with anxiety and stress, I'd hold on to that. And I would speak it out loud and there would be a peace that would come upon me. And I would say, thank you, Lord, because that peace was something I needed to get me through that season. And glory be to God. I'm thankful now she she is clean and sober for almost five years now. She's a mother of two beautiful children. And I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud of the woman she's become. Um, and then with my dad, I've shared it in one of my messages about restoration and how uh, my dad was estranged from me for the last five years of his life. And uh, it was a trying time because I think every, every boy wants his dad, mm -hmm. right? And uh, even when you're a grown man, you still want your father. And not having him, it really hurt. And uh, God had given me that scripture in Malachi 4, 6. It says, uh, I'm going to return the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the children to the father. And long story short, God uh, restored me and my dad's relationship the last 30 days of his life when he was diagnosed with cancer and literally got to hold his hand as he took his last breath. And, uh, you know, I was so grateful. I, I remember people were telling me, you know, hey, I'm so sorry for the passing of your father. And I said, hey, don't take this the wrong way, okay? <laughs> I, I'm sad that he's not here, but I am so full of gratitude for what God has done in this time. I don't have time to grieve right now. I'm just so overwhelmed with gratitude. And, uh, you know, and then last but not least in, in 2023, uh, last year, uh, my father-in-law uh, was diagnosed uh, with a, a rare blood disease. And um, 
in the process of him getting ready to go meet Jesus, my wife was very concerned. Like, I don't know where my dad is with Jesus. I don't know. He says he's okay with him, but I want to know I'm going to see my dad again. And I remember 27 years, my wife has been praying for my father-in-law. And every time we'd talk about God, he'd say, all right, I'm good with God. You know, he didn't want to talk about it. Uh, but I remember like three days before he passed, the Lord said, I want you to share uh, Psalms 107 verse 20 with him. And then I want you to explain it to him. And I, I remember holding his hand and he said, will you pray for me? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm going to pray a scripture over you though. And as I, I read it to him, it says, uh, you know, for the Lord, he sent his word to heal them and to save them from the grave. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you know what that means? And he goes, no. And I said, Jesus is the word. God sent his word to heal you mm -hmm. and to also save you from the grave, which means you don't have to be afraid to die. And I said, do you want that, that faith to know that when you take your last breath here, you're going to take your first breath in heaven? He said, yeah. Wow. And he accepted Jesus Christ that night. And my wife was kind of reluctant. Like, I don't know. Did he really mean it? The very next day, he looks at my wife and says, why did I wait so long? Mm -hmm. so and she says, she yeah. said, what do you mean, daddy? She, he says, why did I wait so long to ask Jesus into my life? And I'm so grateful that even in the, the hard times, right? It's hard, guys, ladies. We're, we're, we're going to go through valleys where it hurts, but can I tell you, God is faithful, and He's good, and He loves you even when it hurts. Yeah. That's like uh, Romans 8, 28. It's one of my, also one of my favorite scriptures. It says that God will cause all the things that we're going through to work for our good because we love Him, and we're called according to His purpose. Paul also says in Philippians 4, 6, that we're not to be anxious about anything. That was your message, by the way, on Sunday. Be anxious about nothing, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So we have to be in a place where we're patient, where we're praying, and we're being thankful. And then verse 9 says in Philippians 4, that then the God of peace will be with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's a lot of times we're not finding that peace because we're anxious, we're not praying, and we're not being grateful for the things that God has given us. I like what you said, Russell, but what, in your experiences there, it, it shows that not only that pastors are not exempt right. from going through trials and tribulations, we're not exempt from that, but one of the things, and I know you guys as a family, that you guys are praying warriors, and even through this time that you're prayed over those circumstances and situations, your daughter, your father-in-law, your mom, you guys were praying, and even, this is good for us, is that in kind of my message yesterday, are you willing to wait for that answer? Because you had to wait all that time for your daughters, yeah. and you had to wait for your dad, but even if it's the last hour, God will answer our prayers, Amen. because it's his timing. So in that, not only are we being prepared to receive that response, but then we have an attitude of gratitude, because when we get the response that we were looking for, whether I remember you talked about being healed, right? Lord, are you going to heal me? Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and he said, yes. Like, are, are you going to heal me or are you going to take, you know, me, take me home? And he, he said, said yes. yes. <laughs> so those two questions, in though. those situations, <laughs> God knows the answers that right. he has, even though we may not know the answer. So um, that, that just reminds me, our title doesn't exempt us from anything. No. We're still walking with the Lord just like you guys are. We're walking with the Lord but we're trying to give you the experience that we dive back into the Word of God. We dive back into His Word to strengthen us and His promises. He's given us His promises in His, in His Word. So we just lean on His promises and by faith is how we are able to get through those trials and those valleys. Walk so by faith, not, by, not sight. by sight. And that's yeah. my, my life verse that's is right. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, walk yeah. by faith, not by sight. So I just want to encourage you guys that wherever you're at right now, whatever that season is, if you're praying for a loved one, if you're praying for your own circumstances and situations, hang in there. God will respond, but he'll respond at his will being done, right? At his perfect timing. And then hopefully at that time, you're groomed and you have peace that surpasses that understanding. Yeah. Amen. Anything you'd like to close with? Uh, just that uh, I'm thankful sitting here. Amen. You know, everything that you guys talked about, um, it's true because it's, it's God's word. And when we keep our eyes on him, um, he's going to take us through anything and everything um, that we need to go through. Um, 
remember he creates these or he allows these things to happen in our lives um, to allow growth, to allow our faith to develop and to uh, help the ministry is spreading his word and spreading who he is. And so if you're going through something good, remember to share it. If you're going through something bad, remember to share it. Keep him at the center of all things. And, and that's Amen. truly, uh, that's a blessing. Yes. Amen. And we're happy to have you here. I mean, we know your testimony, Derek, and, and your story. Yeah, and, um, and if anybody's testimony, I mean, I, I, can't, I, I think about this, like each one of us has led somebody to the Lord, mm-hmm. right? And even if it was one person, each one of us have led someone to the Lord. Right. And, and it's your testimony at times that, that converse, at least they have an ear to hear. Right. So I know you're, I, I'm saying that because that's one of the things I'm grateful for. I'm so grateful that God brought you here at this time yeah. and this season. I'm glad that my brother Russell, yeah. I remember when you started, I'm glad yeah. you guys are here at this time. He has work and assignment for us to do. And, and I'm, I want him to be pleased mm-hmm. for what we're doing for his kingdom. Everything that we mention is not our selfishness. It's not anything that we're, we're looking for. Mm-hmm. We're here as servants and, yeah. and serving the Lord. And we get uh, an attitude of gratitude and, and thankfulness for being able to be in these positions to impact yeah. his kingdom like that because yeah. of his strength and because of what he's given us. So I'm grateful for you Amen. guys. I'm grateful for you Absolutely. guys too. Absolutely. I'm, I'm grateful for the staff. It's yes. an amazing staff. I'm grateful for this congregation. I, I don't say this biasly. Um, I think we have one of the most genuine, loving churches out of any church I've been a part of. Uh, we're not perfect, but I'll tell you, when you walk through those doors, you're going to feel a sincere love of Jesus. And, uh, you know, that's why, you know, it says in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love because... Jesus said, that's how they're going to know you're of me is how you love one another. And, you know, I want to close with this last scripture. It's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And Paul says, rejoice always, pray continuously, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will for you in Christ Jesus. We're to rejoice. It's not a suggestion. It's actually a command. We're to rejoice. Why? Our God's faithful church. And even when it seems like it's the darkest, can I tell you, that's when his truth will shine the brightest in our lives. Mm -hmm. And as we pray, like Pastor Jerry was saying, and Derek, we're praying to a God that hears our prayers and he's going to answer our prayers. And because of that, we should always give thanks for everything in our life because everything we have is a gift. We don't deserve it. Thank God we don't get what we deserve and thank God we get what we don't deserve, right? And that's the love and the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. So what is the will of God for your life this year? Well, be thankful, be thoughtful, and be joyful. There is a lot of things I know we're going through as a nation right now, but can I tell you, I think God is more recognized in this nation now than he ever has been. And uh, so keep praying for America. Keep praying for your families. Pray for the prodigals. They're coming home. We thank you in advance, Lord. But, uh, you know, uh, whoever would like to close in prayer? You want to pray? Pastor Jerry. So, Heavenly Father, as we remember, tomorrow is a a season of thanksgiving. There's many people that are going to be thankful. And, Lord, I pray that in this season, as people are enjoying their families and they're enjoying their their meals together, Lord, your name is spread over in a a way that that you would be recognized on this day, Lord, that you would be lifted up on this day. And Father, um, we are truly grateful that we have a place that we can worship you, yes. that we can praise you, yes, Father. that Lord, that we can lift you up, Lord, that we can impact communities, neighborhoods, yes. Lords, because of your word. You. Lord, you put it on our hearts. So continue to, as iron sharpen iron, sharpen us, Lord. Yes. Give us wisdom, give us discernment to do things that you want us to do, to move in the way that you want us, want us to move. Lord, to remove things out of our life that don't belong there. Lord, we rebuke anything that the enemy tries in this season of being grateful and being thankful. Lord, Lord, we just, we want our eyes, as Derek said, focused on you. So whatever is muddying that up, whatever is blocking that vision, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would clear things and give us supernatural ability to see the plans that you have, not only for our congregation, not only for our family, not only for our church, Lord, but for us individually, 
Lord, show us the path that you have. Show our congregation, show our, our, our members, Lord, what you have for them. And Lord, we will give you all the praise and all the glory because yes, we know all this, as Pastor Russell said, belongs to you. Lord, this is on loan to us. Our, even our families are on loan. That's you right. can take it all this back at any time because all of it belongs to you. That's right. And we're grateful that you've given us an opportunity yes. on this in this time to enjoy our families, to enjoy our friends, to enjoy each other's company. But Lord, we know your timing is perfect. Your will is perfect. So we ask that, Lord, that we just continue to follow us, continue to guide us and lead us. And we thank you in advance on how you're going to do this. Yes. In the name above all names, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ and everybody can say, Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, we guys. love you. Thank you for allowing us to spend your Wednesday night with you. And when you're having turkey or ham or whatever you guys have, uh, enjoy that time with your family and know that, you know, you're not just part of that family. You're part of our family, too. And we love you. OK, you we have a saying here. Yeah, we'll see you here, here there, there or in, in the air. air. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving.